Alex, right down here to your left. How are you? Good, how are you? Very good, very good. Yeah, you seem to just be in such a good place mentally going this week. I know there was, you know, a lot of questions last time, but do you feel like that's kind of a distant memory at this point? Oh, yeah, it is, you know. I play on, move on, you know what I mean? It's a, yeah, like you can't win them all, you know what I mean? Uh, like if I've got a job in front or a goal ahead, that's it. Locked in, focused on that. So uh, completely forget about that. I'm a, re I'm, I'm a realist, man. Like I, I understand the situation. Okay, no worries, move on. You know what I mean? Like it's not like... Uh, yeah, like, uh, you, know, you, you got caught. Islam uh, did a great job, caught me, you know what I mean? Uh, play on, move on. Yeah, and you're, right now you're one of four fighters in UFC history who's made a successful title defense after a loss, and now you could become the only one to do it twice. Okay. Um, is that like a kind of show of the perseverance you could have and, you know, the highs and the lows, but what you can overcome personally? Well, of course, because that's, that's always a good story. You know, they're the, they're, you know whenever there's uh, movies, you know, there's got to be adversities, you know what I mean? And... Um, that's why this is the perfect fight coming off uh, what happened. You know, everyone see me at my, my lowest. Uh, now I get to bounce back and, you know, fight this undefeated prospect uh, that everyone thinks, you know, like me, I'm 35, all this, this uh, you know, these uh, narratives, beautiful. It's perfect, you know, perfect uh, story and uh, the hype's there. He's doing a great job. I just need to go out there, be the experienced guy that goes out there and uh, shows him what's up, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's perfect for me. Uh, so I just get to relax, enjoy enjoy fight week, and um, remind everyone. Have you ever had an opponent, you know, make you feel this way? I know you're kind of pretty even keel and stuff, but he's been saying a lot of stuff. I'm sure it makes it easier to get out of bed every day and train and things like that. But has anyone kind of motivated you in this way that he's approaching you? Um, I don't like I do. It's weird. Like uh, it doesn't get under my skin or anything like that at all. It just uh, like I said, I'm I'm sort of happy and thankful I'm like oh geez you know what I mean like uh, you could do do all that you know uh, build the hype say say what you want all I need to do is again be that veteran be that experienced guy that goes out there and just shows you what's up and then that's just the perfect ending to that story you know what I mean and uh, he's doing a great job so I'm actually I'm like cheers bro like you know what I mean I, I, I enjoy it I really do so uh, it doesn't get under my skin uh, there's a, so many reasons for me to be motivated as I've always said discipline i'm going to turn up in the gym I'm gonna, if i've got a job or a goal ahead that's it i'm locked in but it was easy coming off a loss um you know people with this you know 35 year old thing or like you know whatever it is like all these uh, narratives i love it you know what i mean it, everyone knows i thrive in these moments when people doubt me it's the best you mentioned motivations uh, i want to know if this tweet from ufc 264 is the motivation in this fight at all uh, thought i'd bet a little money on ryan hall and accidentally added an extra zero so we're winning big or losing big today <laughs> yeah i remember that actually so i didn't uh, um i think he, he, he might have replied back then as well and he was dirty that i didn't know who he was but i was like chill out bro you know what i mean like i know you yeah i think that's a. Uh, he just thought he was always a superstar, I guess. But I'm like, mate, it wasn't a, it wasn't a harsh dig at you. I'm like, I'm the one who lost money, mate. What are you angry about? Do you remember how <laughs> much uh, you put on that? With uh, that nah, wasn't too much anyway. But I mean, uh, obviously, an, an extra is zero more than, than I wanted. Yeah, for sure. And just last thing for me, uh, you got through him. Same so question. Definitely a couple uh, or a few zeros. <laughs> and uh, you got through Ilya, you're going to get the same questions again. Who's left for Volk at 45, right? He's kind of done it all. Um, are you looking at other people out there, you know, Movsar? Uh, has anyone impressed you of late that you feel makes sense, or is lightweight kind of the goal again? I mean, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, I guess what, whatever's next is whatever's next. I do want a clear guy, you know. It's uh, after I take uh, Ilya's zero, I mean, taking someone else's zeros, yeah, that might be the trend after that. We'll see, but... You know, I'm uh, confident I'll take out anyone, so whoever it is, you know, bring it on. But, yeah, it's not, I guess it's not too clear right now, so we'll see We'll see what's next. Yeah, and actually, just one more. Uh, you talked last time at the media day about the EA cover curse. It obviously didn't go your way. Uh, how do you feel about coming into that one? Do you feel like it, it's still a thing that you need to overcome? Oh, man, I don't, you know, I don't look at, uh, obviously, all these things. You know, it's funny, like, I'll play into them. I'll, like, muck around with them and that, but um, I look at the facts and what really... Uh, you know, happens, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I don't think uh, a UFC cover, you know, uh, I'll, I'll probably look more at uh, 11 days notice or preparation or something more than I would at a UFC cover, you know what I mean? So it's just, uh, it is what it is, you know. Obviously, it was, that's why everyone thought it was a bad idea at the start. Who wants to take on Islam on 11 days notice? I told myself I could do it, and I was wrong.
Alex, there are obviously lots of times in your career that you've been considered the underdog, but I don't know if I've ever sensed a time before a fight, maybe because of the loss, where everyone's really sort of saying, oh, this is the guy to dethrone Alex. Do you feel like this is the most counted out you've been so far in your career? Um, or a, as champion? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think so. Uh, what about with the, the Max the Third one? Or oh, probably not. Yeah, yeah, this would probably be the most, which is good. Like I said, like I don't like... It doesn't uh, get to me. It's like it's, it's building this fight up. Because if I didn't go out there and do what happened in uh, October, these conversations are much different. Believe me. You know what I mean? You can say what you want. Oh, this is the guy. This is the guy. We'll see if he's, you know, let's, let's post fight, uh, com uh, press conference. Um, yeah, it's going to be a, t a totally different conversation. You're going to be uh, all of a sudden saying, man, what are you going to do at Featherweight? There's nothing left for you. Look what you're doing to these guys. So, uh, that's how I'm looking at this fight. Again, I'm, I, I, I prepared properly. Um, I'm ready, you know, for uh, a young, hungry prospect to come and uh, bring bring a fight. But I, I won't be surprised, and you shouldn't be surprised if I make it look easy. I'm not saying that's exactly how it is. I'm not cocky like that. I prepared properly. But if he doesn't land a punch and I ragdoll him and, and make him look like nothing in there, you shouldn't be surprised. And I guarantee you, even though this all this talk, post-fight press conference, you're just sitting there saying, like, oh, yeah, he didn't stand a chance. And you're, the tone is going to be totally different. Yeah. But I'm glad it's not because I want the hype. So keep <laughs> saying all that stuff. You're saying the right stuff anyway. Uh, he was actually here uh, a while ago, and he was breaking down your skills, and he was saying that, you know, he's seen it before. You throw kicks, you fire up the punches, and you try and push him to the cage, and that's all you have. I don't know if you look at You're obviously considered a very cerebral fighter mm -hmm. who can break things down meticulously. Do you think he is that, or do you think he's almost a bit more raw and sort of brute strength and it isn't actually that sort of as thought out as you well, he, well him just saying that like uh, he doesn't know the, the details like you know what i mean then i know uh, like i know for a fact he does not understand the game like me so for him to just think that i'm just kicking like you know and doesn't understand timing the distance the you know it go there's so many different layers there like if you don't understand that mate i'm gonna mop the floor with you this weekend so uh, hopefully that's just all talk. Otherwise, it's going to be a walk in the park for me. He, um, he's one of these young guys, right, who has that sort of bravado and stuff like that. Do you think that could potentially work against him, right? If he's already calling himself champion, do you think he could go in there almost that's having thought he's done it before he's done it, if you know what I mean? Yeah, look, man, he's probably just playing the game. He's probably just doing a great job. Good on him. Like I said, I appreciate it. But, um, yeah, I mean, like the... The good thing is high up, he's, he's doing all that, like, but it can bite you in the ass, mate. Like, you know what I mean? Like, could you imagine what it's going to be like? Uh, you know, once I get my hand raised, I'm wearing that belt, and like, because you know, playing the whole superstar thing, and like, look, yeah, I'm going to do this. Uh, Conor McGregor, no one, no top guys, going to, you know, just all this sort of stuff. And you go out there, and mate, everyone's going to completely forget about you, man. You're going to, it's going to hurt. That's going to hurt, uh, hurt him a lot. You know, how does he bounce back from that? Um, yeah, but I mean, like, like, I think he's just here playing the game. He's probably clever. He's smart. Like, he's just uh, playing the game. He's probably preparing properly. Uh, knowing that, all right, I know I'm talking a lot. This can go really good or can go really bad. But, yeah, I think he's just, just playing the game well. Last one for me. I saw you had a truce with Henry Cejudo. Curious if it was fun to get back with him after some of the things he said, you said. Was it cool to put it? Well, like yeah. Well, I mean, uh, obviously, yeah, I had that conversation with you. I'm just like, if he did do that, like, I, st I, still don't, I still don't know. Like, oh, look, I'm, I'm an easy going guy, you know what I mean? Like, but um, like I said, for that to happen to do it on camera, like, you know, that's why I was just like, as I said, I was like, man, what the fuck? But, uh, but yeah, he reckons it was a prank. After seeing some videos, I was like, oh, I don't know. But, uh, you know, yeah. Anyway, we'll see. <laughs> what well, do you reckon? Uh, his Eric went on the MMA hour and said it wasn't planned. So what wasn't planned? The, the whole thing that was filmed. He said he didn't know that was going to happen. So, like, yeah, so he wasn't there all camp and then a bit of backlash. Yeah. They slipped the, you know. I just mean, just don't do it in front of camera, man. Like, you you know what I mean? You want to do it, like, if it's things that aren't working out. Um, and then if you did do it, man, just own it as well. Like, yeah. you sort of uh, want to feel bad because he obviously regrets it. But, um Over here. Back here. Over here. Last time at Featherweight, the storyline against Yair Rodriguez was we'll, we'll deal with a deal with Yair's unorthodox style and, you know, question mark kicks, all that. So now 
It's the challenge of a young and hungry undefeated contender in Ilya Tapuria. So where do you rank Ilya Tapuria amongst all the guys we've so, seen? So other than that, what what should I be like? At least we've, uh, uh, you know, when you were saying this with uh, Yair Rodriguez, you were saying the kicks, the diversity in the kicks, the you know the unorthodox uh, style, like all these weapons. You could literally point out all these danger factors because he's shown you that. Now people are just trying to throw up random numbers. So like a, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, it's it's just funny. It's like people gonna be like, oh. I need to look at, oh, he's undefeated. You know what I mean? Like, you know, what, what, what's a big threat? Maybe he's boxing. People could say boxing. Should I be worried about just a, uh, just a boxing style? Um, I don't know. But, you know, and you could probably see in my face, I ain't worried. You know what I mean? Like, again, everyone has a puncher's chance, and uh, I'm always aware of that. Um, I think the only way I ever lose in this division uh, is someone catching me. You know what I mean? You know, it's again, it's wrong to say lucky punch, but someone catching me, I think that's the only way anyone ever beats me. And um, and that's the case with this one. You know what I mean? Like, he ain't showing me things that are un other than some good hands that I need to be worried about. You know what I mean? But obviously you worry about it because, again, you've got the punch's chance. But for me, you know, like, like I said, like, you know, pretty much every single time we fight, I make this look easy. For sure. And so you think so for the people that are counting you out, it's – Maybe because of the way the last Islam fight went, yeah, rather of than purely based on Ilya's skill. Well, that's what I mean. Everyone's, uh, you know, people keep uh, saying like, "Oh, this is the guy," but then they keep the the facts that they're going off is me coming off a loss. Oh, this guy's undefeated, and they're doing this. Not, you know, maybe some people might touch on the boxing, but you know, if you think just a boxer boxing style is going to be a big threat to me, then maybe we don't know enough. Look, he's got some good counters. He's, he's very well based. He's powerful. I mean, the power is a definitely a, a danger factor there. But, I mean, you need to land these shots. I mean, like, uh, you know, look at Yoya Rodriguez, like how much, you know, think of how many times he lands on people. It's not easy to land when I'm aware and I'm, I know what's going on, you know. We all land completely clean. Obviously, the last one got was it landed clean. But um, it's just, yeah, like I said, it's a, I'm not saying he's not skillful, but he hasn't proved nothing yet. He's going to have to try and prove something uh for people to really believe this hype is real. But I mean, that hype is there. Build up the fight, I'm glad. But there's a good chance all that hype goes away real quickly. What was that? Was that me? <laughs> Bless you. Um, fair enough, and so when you were promoting the hashtag Sign Volkanovski campaign back oh, yep. in 2016, did you ever envision that you'd be sitting here talking to us about to go defend your title for the sixth time? Um, I've pictured myself in the, in the UFC and all that, maybe not uh, talking at press conferences and that, but uh, I always pictured myself, even before I was even in the UFC, oh, sorry, even doing MMA, I pictured myself in the octagon because uh, I was a big fan of the sport and I'm like, I reckon I could do it. I wasn't even training at the time. So it was uh, something that I always wanted to do. I started training and then, you know, it started being real where I was like, you know, the pretty much the number one guy in Australia that wasn't signed, um, you know, world champion, things were going really well. I was like... Uh, hurry up get me in there like I just wanted like my first few fights in the in the actual UFC way less pressure than the fights before I got in the UFC because I know that if I was to lose before I got in the UFC that's a few steps back I need a few more wins before I even get in there I knew once I was in the UFC that like, I knew I was ready so like I was like you know I'm like at least I'm there like I know I'm, I'm in there and I know I can beat most of these guys yeah you know there's obviously a chance of losing but I know I'll get a second chance and there's no way um, lose it twice in a row, you know what I mean? Like so, that's that was how I was looking at it, and um, but yeah, but it's it's crazy. It is crazy when you you know you think of that, and then obviously it's weird because it seems so long ago, but it just seems like uh, not too long ago at the same time. I don't know how that how that works. It seems like a, sorry, doesn't seem that long ago, but it seems like a whole lifetime ago. So it's like a different life or, almost. It's it's weird. That's awesome. And final one for me. You've accomplished a lot in this sport already, so. My question is, before you do end up calling it, whenever you do, what, is, what are your final goals in this game? Is it to finally hoist that lightweight crown one day or fight a specific location or fight somebody one day before you call it? I mean, yeah, there's, there's plenty. Obviously, holding that, that second belt would be great. Uh, you've got, you know, Madison Square Garden. You've got, yeah, there's a few things. Just keep uh, defending, keep, uh, keep winning, keep making money and keep, uh, you know, building that legacy for yeah, myself but my, for my family as well. So, you know what I mean? So I want to be, 
uh, great. That's why I commit to this sport because it, it's at the end of the day, it's all for my for my family. You know what I mean? And and that's all that that's all that matters. I put myself through it just so I can get them paychecks and make sure you know we're set for life. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. So, Alex, uh, you know, between Holloway three times and Yair and Ortega and Islam a couple times, which fight in your career do you feel like gave you the most confidence and growth that you could keep taking forward in your career? Um, mm, I feel like uh, I definitely hit a, I mean, there's a few different ones. You had your Chad Mendes, that was a, you know, like, oh, yeah, the first like legend of the sport, like real contender. Then you had obviously Ortega, where a lot mentally uh, changed there, confidence-wise in that. That's when I, like even inside and outside the octagon, a lot uh, happened after that. Uh, so uh, that one, and then Max, the third one, obviously going out there and knowing that I had to deal with, you know, some doubters and people that were always going to say stuff. It's like, I need to close that chapter. You know what I mean? So uh, it was good, good after that one as well. And then I could like feel like I could move on. Um, so yeah, so there's there's a couple there. And then, uh, Volk, I think a lot of the fans just can't stop watching your ad about making fun of being old. First off, great acting. Mm -hmm. Secondly, can you talk to us, the director, the writers, who brought up all those <coughs> ideas? It was just beautifully executed. Yeah, so that was a sports bet uh, idea. Like obviously, they mentioned, oh, you know, would you be interested? Like you're doing, I'm like, mate, great. Like let's do it. That's going to be unreal. And they they. they come up with a lot of it but uh mate one take bulk mate i'm telling you all them takes we we finished like three hours early did it all in a, a in a few hours um acting was on point so uh there, there might be something there do you have a i enjoy it too i actually I, I love it i absolutely love it did you have one of the favorite uh clips or moments from that commercial personally uh which one like there's there was a lot of it was gold really uh which one was fun I don't know. Yeah, the the taxation office one, maybe. That, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Loved it. Um, the final question, slightly more personal. You know, after the your last fight, you talked about dealing with those emotions and those nerves and everything else. I'm wondering in the month since, and since you talked about it, just some things you may be able to share about how you have, you know, learned to handle some of those emotions in between fights. Yeah, man, I've always, um, I've always uh, dealt with it very good like I've always been um, yeah like I've always been self-aware you know what I mean very self-aware like I, I, I understand uh, how I what makes me tick I understand all that so it, it's weird because obviously I did touch on in between fights you know it it gets hard I said that you do get uneasy but I deal with it very well I find ways whether it's uh, you know you know in the gym learning or teaching or whatever it is that makes me tick and I can tick them boxes as long as I'm evolving uh, but there was just a uh, just the pressure of uh, obviously trying to be a, a good dad, sleepless nights with a newborn, coming off surgery. So the pressure just got to me, and I was just wasn't dealing with things as well as I usually would. And then people just see me after I got knocked out, which I'm glad people still saw that because it is something that um, I want people to you know take serious and understand. So I'm glad people get to see me and they get to see how I am now and how what's going to happen is the bounce back. They get to see that. But I'm all good. You know what I mean? Like I'm very, very good when it comes to that. So usually I'm a, you know, I'm a rock. I'm, I'm the rock of my household. There was just a time where I just, I just wasn't. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, when things, when there's that little bit of extra pressure that all at once, it can get to you. And it can get to anyone. Trust me, the people that reached out, you'd be surprised or probably not even surprised. Because everyone gets uneasy here and there, you know what I mean? But it's just, you know, usually you don't have a camera in your face uh, after you got knocked out while, you, while you're there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hola. Eh, hi, Volk. Me gustaría saber, a, a nivel mental, después de la última derrota por KO, cómo ha trabajado esta faceta para que no le asalten las dudas una vez dentro de la jaula contra un pelador tan peligroso como puede ser Ilya Topuria. I'd like to know what kind of work was put in the mental, the mental aspect of the preparation after going through the experience of a knockout. So what, is, what do you do to actually remove any doubt within your mind that that's not going to happen again? Um, man, I'm very calculated. Like, I understand what went wrong and play on, move forward. Like, I don't look at that as being like anything other than, you know, how I look, I look at that situation. So it was very easy for me to, to move on. Like, you know, it wasn't like 
um, he was just telling me up everywhere and all this and you know I mean it was just that's just how it went I'm, I'm all good with it you know what I mean and uh, you know I know how I felt in there and uh, so I, I so I understand that so it's easy for me to move on see I don't want to you know like a, no matter how you talk about this everyone's just going to say excuses and stuff like that but like I did, it just didn't feel, feel right in there I couldn't let the hands go and pay the ultimate price for it you know and that's why preparation is key and like we all know that and I've always been a big believer in that I told myself I could do it because uh, that's just how my mindset and mentality is, you know what I mean? I thought I'd be more dangerous. I thought I'd let the hands go. I knew I couldn't go a decision. I'm like, I'm going to get this guy. Like, you know, this is going to be the most dangerous I've ever been. And yet, I couldn't even throw a punch. That's, that's how I felt in there. So, um, again, it's a... Uh, and, again, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm taking anything away because I'm not. He... He felt that like uh, I was maybe biting on these. He felt my guard was down, so he still did a great job to capitalize on that. So full credit to Islam. But for me, in that question, for me moving on is very easy because I understand that situation. I'm okay, very self-aware, as I told you. Play on, move on. Make sure we follow the protocols like we did uh, and move on, move forward. And then camp just felt exactly like how every other one, other one did. I didn't look at that at all, really, to be honest. It's, I don't know, maybe it's just how my head works. But it's... Yeah, camp was great. Well, I should have been looking at you when I was saying that. Sorry. <laughs> y otra pregunta tenía eh, es en caso de que Ilya Topuria ganara la pelea, si te gustaría pedir una revancha inmediata y si eso podría darse incluso en UFC en España, que es lo que Ilya estaba pidiendo en caso de que él ganara este cinturón poder defenderlo en en España. Another question I had in just the, in the, the scenario, in a scenario that Ilya actually wins the fight, would you go for and ask for a rematch immediately, and would that be possible in Spain? Because it's something that Ilya has been talked about. You know, I, I would like to actually be able to win a championship, actually defend it in Spain. Would you be interested first in a rematch and doing it in Spain, as he mentioned? Yeah, of course. Yeah, sweet. But I'm going to go out there and win, and I'll headline Spain. How about that? <laughs> I'll go there and I'll headline Spain. And you know what? I think they're struggling still maybe. I don't know. It seems like they could be. I don't know. Wherever they are with uh, UFC 300. I know a guy. You know what I mean? It's not too... Yeah, it's plenty plenty of time. So just so you know that. Just in case there's anything happening, Dana, Hunter, you know a guy. I'm going to go do business, ruin someone's party or a few people's party, and then I can come save the day like I always do. Okay, thank you.